three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning and welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I'm your host, Jordan Devitt, and I'm so grateful that you have joined me this morning. Before I do anything, I'd like to thank Pastor Dan, the bishop here at the Lighthouse Church of All Nations, and Pastor Garland for allowing me this amazing opportunity. I also wanna ask each and every one of you that you would share this broadcast so that someone would be able to hear the message of the gospel ministered today. I believe that it'll touch people's lives and change them forever, so I thank you for that. This morning, I'm so excited because God gave me a wonderful message to give to you all called, We Are the Clay to the Potter. We are the clay to the potter. Jeremiah 18, one through four says this, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at the wheel, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. There are many different scriptural references of us as humans being clay and the potter representing God. Today, I wanna crack this open because I believe there are some great practical ways we can apply this message to our lives. The first point is God is sovereign. I wanna begin by saying that a potter makes the decisions in what they're going to make when they develop anything with the clay. They decide the shape, the size, the texture, all the different variables that are entailed in designing and making clay as a potter into whatever they wanna make, a sculpture or whatever it might be. And we must remember though, it's in their hands, not our own. I think it's very easy for us to feel like we wanna be the potter in our own stories. It's very easy for us to wanna be the ones to take control, where we make all the decisions, where we have all the control, where we put everything in order that we want so that things go the way that we feel like they should go. Although God has, of course, given us a level of authority, a level of uh, leadership in our lives, he wants to be able to flow through us with ease. Proverbs 16 and nine says this, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. What I'm saying is God should be able to be the one who comes in freely and flows through us in a blissful way. And so it's very hard for God to do that. It's very God, hard for God to be able to come into our plans when we always bring him in at the very end. Today I wanna to encourage you that as you make plans in your life, as you do things in your life, would you incorporate God early on? Stop letting God be the one who, after everything has been completely finished, telling him, hey God, what do you think about this? Well, the problem with that is this. When we try to figure it out and we do everything on our own, once everything's finished, we're gonna have to restart if things are messed up and God didn't approve of it. Ask God before, not after the project is over. Make a plan, but let God be involved in the plan. Let God be a part of the plan. Let God be the one who helps you write the blueprints rather than at the very end when the project is all done, having to redo everything. Not too long ago, I had a project that I had to do and it was some tile work. And I decided that even though I hadn't ever done a project like this, I was gonna do it and I was gonna try hard with it. 
So I went to do the task and I spent countless hours working on it, watching YouTube videos, all the things that you could do to try to make sure that the project went awesome. And I thought I was an expert. I thought I was doing great. I thought that it looked phenomenal. I did it all and at the very end I decided after I was all finished, I was gonna go and ask an expert how they thought it looked. I brought them to the project and showed them my work, very excited, very eager because I wanted them to say, hey, good job, this went awesome. But little did I realize that the whole project was completely wrong. <laughs> I put caulk in places where grout was supposed to go and the whole project had to be completely redone from start to finish. I spent even more time because I had to go back and take all of the caulk out, remove all of the things that I messed up on because I decided to ask the expert at the very end of the project. Many times, this is what we do to God. We ask the expert, we ask God at the end of our project after everything has already been done. And you know what God says? He says, redo it. Because we never asked him in the first place. Quit waiting to the very last moment for God to step into your situation. Quit waiting for the very last moment to ask God for help. Why do we do this? Why do we always wait? God should be the first person as soon as we come up with an idea, as soon as we come up with a plan, as soon as we're trying to get things situated, we gotta say, God, would you order our steps today? Would you come into the plan today? Would you come and teach us what to do with this scenario? When we do that, we remove the possibility of messing up. We remove the possibility of having to restart and I'm here to give you this today because I believe that this really can help you all. Let God be part of the initial plan. Let him be part of the initial uh, project that we have. Let him. He wants to be involved in the blueprints, in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. So he can gently guide us along the way. Point number two is this, be flexible enough to be reworked. If you've ever worked with clay, you know that clay can be very easy to get stiffened up and get hard. And if it's not properly sealed or covered, then things can go stiff and get really hardened very quickly. And my second point to you this morning is do not be so stiff. Otherwise, it will be hard to work and to move for your life for the potter. And he'll have to use even more force to force and mold and push you into what he's trying to design you to look like and to be. Sometimes as believers, we get so stiff to the point where we're not flexible at all to do what God needs to get done in our lives. We can't flex when plans don't go well. We can't flex when things get changed and when our plans are not the way that we thought they would be. And I want you to understand we should not be this high maintenance. We shouldn't be getting so stiff to God that it takes God to have to come in and really break us down for him to do what he wants to do in our lives. It reminds me of the story of Luke 10 and 38. And it says this, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. 
Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. When, in the, when I read this story, I realized that using my anointed imagination, Martha, in many situations, we are like. And the reason is this. We have made this big dinner, or in a sense, we had this great big plan. We've prepared every little detail, brought the food out, made sure that there was enough chairs for our guests. We did every little thing that you could imagine, checked it off on our checklist. But we become worried and anxious because we want everything to go so, so well that we end up missing the whole point, getting mad at people, projecting our anxiety onto others, feeling fearful. And what I want you to understand today is this, God is the only one that we need. And in the times where we feel so overwhelmed by all the things that are going on, and we feel anxious that we start to blame people and point fingers and start to get so overwhelmed, remember that God is in control. We don't need to be so fearful and angst. God doesn't want that. Then the whole beautiful event that we have gets completely ruined because of our anxiety. Today, God has already freed us from that. We have to be willing to say, God, I'm just going to enjoy your presence here. I'm just gonna enjoy this event. I'm not gonna be so stiff that if one little thing goes wrong, then the whole moment is ruined. No. And believe me, I've done this before. And I'm sure many of you listening have done the same thing that we want everything to go so perfectly. And if one little thing gets messed up, the whole event is ruined. I'm here to tell you that Jesus said it is not. It's not ruined because things went wrong and, and your plan was messed up. No, enjoy the moment. Enjoy what God has in store for you today. Stop letting every little thing that was messed up hinder the joy that God has in being with you and being at your table. Whatever scenario it is in your life, apply this. Be flexible, be loose. Say, God, you could rework the situation. You could rework the scenario. Now make a plan, of course, always make a plan, but leave room for God to step in. I want you to note this. Make a plan, but leave room for God to step in. Don't be anxious when things don't go the way that you thought they were gonna go. Don't blame people, but in fact, enjoy the moment. Enjoy what God has brought before you. Because when you do that, God will be able to use you in a mighty way. And you will also be able to take joy in the things that you're doing. Rather than letting them just destroy you. And that's what was happening to Martha. She was letting that situation destroy her. God doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to be destroyed by the situation that was meant to be a beautiful dinner with the Lord Jesus and his disciples and family. So remember that. Rem remember as you're doing things to keep that in mind. Now I wanna tell you that it is the spirit that is willing to be flexible and the flesh is what is always very 
ready to be stiff. The flesh, anything can throw it off. When the flesh is in control of your life, that is when anything, I mean anything, can throw it off. The littlest thing, if lunch is five minutes late, or if the service goes a little too long, or, if, or whatever it may be, the flesh is the one that wants to be stiff. The spirit is the one that's patient. So if right now maybe you're listening to this and you're saying, ah, I don't know why I feel so burdened by these little things and every little thing is hurting me and, and it's messing me up and it's messing with my mind. I wanna remind you that it's the flesh. When the flesh is in control and when the flesh is leading us, that is what will cause us to say that every little thing is irritating. And what you need to do in those moments is crucify the flesh. Give no room for the flesh. Get back to praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Because when you do that, you begin to let the spirit be the one that leads. And as the spirit leads, the spirit will be laughing when someone is freaking out and getting mad about things that don't really matter. The spirit is laughing when someone comes on the side of the road and flicks you off. <laughs> I mean, the spirit is the one that can have all patience and joy in scenarios that wouldn't even make sense. But remember that if you're feeling stiff, get back to allowing the spirit to be the one that's leading in your life. I know it to be true. It's in God's word. The spirit can take anything. The flesh is the one that, I mean, no matter what it is, it will be irritated. And so remember that, take that into consideration in your life as you're doing things and you're feeling like, ah, I'm feeling stiff, I'm feeling uncomfortable, this is bothering me, that's bothering me. Whatever it may be, stop giving room for the flesh. Number three is this, the potter is the only one who has all understanding. The Bible says this, you turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing made should say of it, its maker? He did not make me or the thing formed say of him who formed it. He has no understanding. We turn things inside out and upside down as humans sometimes. We actually go before God and we come to him as the clay saying that he has no understanding, that he doesn't know what he's doing, that he's not in control, that things aren't going the way that they should be going. You know how foolish this is? I wanna make this even more hit home to you all. It would be like a baby coming up to you and saying that you need to buy this certain house or this certain car or whatever it may be and trying to give you as a grown folk instructions on where to put your money, on what to do in your life. It makes no sense at all. Nothing about that makes sense. That is how we go to God. We go to God in such an upside down way where we come to him and say, well God, I don't know what to say. You, you don't have understanding. Or we think in our minds, God doesn't even know what he's doing. That is sincerely what we do sometimes. We've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop pretending like God doesn't know what he's doing. We constantly are acting in a way where we think God doesn't. And God does. He knows everything. Every little thing that we're going through, he knows about everything. Finances, business, work, family, tragedy, triumph. Every little thing that has ever happened here on earth has never took God by coincidence, by accident, by mistake. He knows it all. He has all understanding. He's omnipresent, omniscient. He knows all things. And we've got to get back to the point where we say, okay, God, you have all understanding. You know all things. You are the potter. I am the clay. And in fact, you are the one who takes lead in my life. I don't need to worry or fret about 
anything because you know all things. He has all understanding. Everything is in the palm of his hands. And this is the last thing that I want to give you all so that we can make everything fit all together. Let God be the one who just has control. Lastly, the Bible said, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good for the potter to do. When clay is spoiled, it begins to need extra work so that it can take the imperfections out that are in it. But what I love is God, the potter, doesn't throw out the clay that's spoiled or the clay that has imperfections or the clay that just is messed up. He reworks it. This is so amazing. He reworks it and turns it into something even better that he knows is good for it. You see, God is not ever through with us as his clay. It's just that there are imperfections, there's issues with us. And so he reworks us into a better vessel. He reworks us into a better thing, sculpts us, designs us, makes the texture of our lives smoother, makes the edges softer, gets everything in order so that we can be what he wants us to be. God, in every situation, is willing to come and to make you into the image that he has for you. You just have to let God have control. As long as you let him have control, you'll never have to restart the process. He'll just recycle us into some better vessel of honor. As I close, a group of television reporters came to Billy Graham's house, a famous evangelist, and he had been very successful, led millions of people to the Lord through crusades and different events of preaching the gospel. And these reporters came to Billy Graham's house when he was well matured. He had really come to the end of his ministry, been very successful. And they said to him, Billy, what is one word that you would use to describe the life of a believer? And Billy responded, surrenderance. Today, I believe that if we can learn the importance of being believers who surrender to God, who acknowledge that God is the potter and we are the clay, so much will go well with us. Today, God is coming to you and he's saying that he wants to rework your life. He wants to take the imperfections. He wants to take the messed up scenarios, and rework them. He wants to be part of your plans, but you've got to let him in before the end so that he can guide you all along the way. I believe that God today is coming and saying to you all, and myself included, that He wants us to remember that he is sovereign. He's strong. He can do all things for us. But we've got to let him in early on rather than at the end. I want to pray right now with you all. Father, I just thank you for your children. I thank you, Lord, that today we're remembering and we're understanding that We are clay in your hands, God. God, mold us into the image of Christ. Mold us into being vessels of honor. Mold us, God. Rework us and take the imperfections out. Remove the imperfections out of our lives. Lord, let us not be so stiff, but let us hold things loosely in our hands 
so that you can come and that you can guide us in every scenario in our lives. Lord, let us see that you are so sovereign in everything, that all power and authority is in your hands. And all we must do is trust you and let you take care of our situations. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Amen. Well, listen, I'm beyond grateful, beyond grateful that you've joined me this morning. I'm so excited for what God is doing today here through this broadcast. I believe that it's touching many lives around us. And I want to encourage you again that you would share this so that someone would be able to be touched and changed by the gospel. God is doing something so wonderful and he wants every person to be around for it. I love you all so, so much. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.